déterminer ton avenir. Que qu'en soit le nombre de féticheurs. Les arbres. Je prophétise. My God will make you to laugh. Hello, God bless you, our wonderful viewers. Wherever you hear the sound of my voice, this wonderful Tuesday morning is another day the Lord has made, and I know you will rejoice and be glad in it. God wants to do some mighty and also awesome things in your life this morning. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of he that died and rose on the third day, Lord, I bring our wonderful viewers before you. You are a blesser, bless them. You are a lifter, lift them up. You are a deliverer, deliver them. Let mysteries, let mysteries be demystified in their life. Make way for them. Prosper your people. Heal every sick, sick one watching me right now. And make way for your people where there is no way. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, when you talk about affliction, it's a serious thing. Nahum, the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 9. He says, affliction will not rise the second time. That means affliction is something very, very terrible. It's something nobody wants to go through. Imagine somebody who became sick unto death that almost died, and the person recovered miraculously. The person does not want to see such kind of situation anymore. It is affliction. Or a woman who every time, a woman who puts to bed and the baby keep, keep on dying. That is affliction. Nobody want to go through such affliction anymore. That's why Nehum declared prophetically that affliction will not rise the second time. Wherever you hear the sound of my voice, I know that affliction in your life is coming to an end. I know that affliction will never rise again. We are dealing with the altars of affliction. Affliction can come from different places, from various means. But there is an altar called the altar of affliction. This altar is what sponsors and directs affliction into the life of people. Some people, their affliction is affliction of poverty. Some are, some are affliction of barrenness, childlessness. Some other people is affliction of disappointment. Some other people is affliction of stagnation. Some other people is affliction of gathering and scattering. I don't care to know the kind of affliction that you are faced with, that your family is faced with. Some people, it is the affliction of sudden death that they experience in their family. But God is bringing you out of it. It's a mystery and you need to understand mystery to demystify this. Now let's go to the word of God. Look at what the Bible says. In the book of Judges chapter 16 I read verse number 21. It said, But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he, and he did grind in the prison house. Now, I want, I, want, I want to read this again. I want you to examine this very well. Now, he said, but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Then, and brought him down to Gaza, bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in, pre, in the prison house. Now, they put out his eyes. Now, when somebody's eyes is put out, the eyes symbolizes vision. It is the eyes that sees the future. Now, anybody who is blind cannot be able to see. He becomes a liability to another person to, to carry him or her about. Now, the same way anybody that has been blinded by the enemy, do not physical blindness, but fo your focus is broken, you, you, become, you become liability to other people. You will not depend on other people to, to become anything in life. So how do you deal with this? When affliction is at place, the first thing affliction does is to pluck off your eyes. It might not be your physical eyes. It might not be your optical eyes. It might be your eyes of the spirit. The eyes that are supposed to give you idea. The eyes that God uses to see in you. The enemy plucks it off. And when that happens, affliction comes on you. When affliction comes on you, what will happen? What will you go through? Now the Bible talked about this man, Samson. Now they plucked off his eye. Then they bound him with fetters of brass. Then, as if that is not enough, then he was taken to prison. 
Look at the kind of affliction the man was going through. Serious affliction. What affliction are you going through? Child of God, God sent me this, this Tuesday morning to let you know that you are coming out of that affliction. Now, how be it? We need to examine some things. How did this affliction come? How did the affliction come about? The affliction is a foundational matter. The affliction is a foundational issue. You see, the enemy does not have power to determine the affliction that comes into your life if your altar does not support them. Now, Samson has a serious altar. Before you can understand the altar of Samson, remember that Jesus Christ was a, was a Nazarene. Remember, that's why we often call him Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he was a Nazarene. Now, the same thing with Samson. But remember, when Jesus burst forth to the scene, when Jesus was born, the Bible said that Herod, that was the king at that time. Remember, there were six Herods in the Bible. Now, one of the Herod that was on the throne as, as at that time sought to kill Jesus. He wanted to kill Jesus at all costs. What was the problem? There was this altar of affliction in Nazareth that does not permit greatness. There is this altar in Nazareth. It is the altar, I describe it as altar of affliction. It does not permit greatness. There are many of you, some of you watching me, the altar of your family. It could be the altar of your father's house. Now the altar now has human agent physically that they use in promoting their work, directing their work. Some of them come as uncles to you. Some of them come as wicked stepmothers. Some of them come in various forms. Now they afflict you. What affliction do they bring into your life? Some of you, you struggle, but there is nothing to show. You work, but nothing is happening. Anything you put forth your hand to do, nothing comes out of it. Now this affliction, they go as far as tormenting you both in your dream. Some of you, every time something good is about to happen, you, you, you have sex in the dream. Some of you, every time something good is about to happen, you see yourself working as a slave in the dream. Some of you, you keep on seeing yourself in the village. These are all affliction that controls the affairs of your life. No, some people say, oh, dream doesn't, who told you it doesn't matter? People were, people were poisoned in the dream and in the physical they became sick and died. I've seen different kind of situations. So you need to understand these are the things of the spirit. Remember the Bible said, though we dwell in the flesh, we do not war by the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. In other words, it is the spiritual that controls the physical. It is the spiritual that controls the physical. Now, Jesus and Samson share the same altar by the reason of their geographical location. Spiritual, spiritually, the altar they came from, the altar of Nazareth. What does it do? The altar does not permit greatness. So, now, before I go back to Samson, when the altar heard that Jesus, a great man, was born, he sought to kill Jesus. Remember, so many children died because this author wanted to kill Jesus. Why? Because it was told that the king of kings has been born. So he was offended. Remember, Herod was the physical agent of the author. But the author is the one that masterminds every thought, everything that comes to the heart and to the mind of this man. Now, going back to Samson, Samson burst forth to the scene. Now, Samson did not fulfill his mandate. What did the altar do? The altar brought a, a woman as a lover, but, an, a, 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 but a hired assassin. That's what the woman is. The woman came into the life of Samson. There are people they send into your life. It could be a woman you marry as your, husband, as your wife. It could be a man you marry as your husband. But the enemy positions different people for different reasons into your life in order to destroy you. But I declare wherever you hear the sound of my voice, every power, everyone that has been assigned into your life, for, to afflict you, you are breaking out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, coming to that of Samson, now, he was in love with a woman, not knowing that this is a hired assassin. A woman was paid by the five lords of Philistines on assignment to afflict Samson, to find out where the great power of Samson lied. And Samson fell for the woman unknown to Samson. And the moment the secret of Samson was let out, look at how she subtly you know, tricked something, made something, you know, manipulated something. Something fell into deep sleep. And a Baba came. She invited a man who is a Baba and bobbed the hair of something. How would something not know that someone was shaving his hair? 
manipulation, affliction. Now, the moment Samson was arrested, look at what became of Samson. The Bible said, but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. His eyes was taken away. The next thing, they bound him with chain. The next thing, they put him in prison. Child of God, I declare over you, every prison the enemy have put to you, you are coming out of it. I remember just on Sunday here, I was praying for a woman. And while I was ministering to the woman, the Lord showed me that this woman in question was going through a serious issue. What was the issue? The issue was affliction from the husband's family by revelation. What was going on? The woman, every time she delivers a baby, she had delivered seven times and lost this baby seven times. Imagine the affliction, the predicament of the woman. I was praying and the Lord took me in the spirit realm and showed me what was going on, that the husband's father was a witch doctor and the man had used the children the son will have as collateral to gain power from the enemy. So every time they make attempt to have baby, when they have baby, the baby will die. That became a donation. That is affliction. Who caused it? By the reason of the covenant of the father, an altar of affliction was established. I don't care to know the altar that was established. While I was ministering to the woman, the, the, the altar manifested by prophecy and said, I am I am the altar of the, of the husband's family. I enter into the family. It was the husband father who brought their children to me by the covenant he entered into when he was looking for power. So every time this woman delivers, I kill the baby. And the husband was in church. was baffled. And by the power of God, the yoke was broken. And the woman and the husband became free. You too can be free. I remember a man. The enemy afflicted him so much poverty. He was looking for money. He met a friend who took him to a ritualist. Unknown to him that the friend wanted to use him to make money. They made something, they did something, they got home. He started bleeding from his manhood. This is not a medical situation, spiritual situation. The man was dying until they brought him on Sunday. Uh, by prophecy, the Lord located him, mentioned his name, and told him what happened, the place he went to, the friend that took him there, everything, the man was amazed. The power of God. And instantly the man was ministered to, and he was delivered. And the blood instantaneously stopped coming out of him, and that was how the man was delivered. Now what was transferred to him, what happened to him, was not transferred to his friend supernaturally by the hand of God. It was the friend who wanted to use him for ritual that is now bleeding from his mouth. As I'm talking to you right now, the man had called to confess to the man and that he wants him to bring him to the church so that the pastor, he wants to repent so that the pastor who healed him will pray for him to be healed. You too can come out of that affliction. You are breaking out of that affliction. Wherever you hear the sound of my voice, it is deliverance from affliction. Whatever affliction you are going through, gathering and scattering, rising and falling, hear me, child of God. You are not watching me by accident. God has God have heard your prayer. When you pray, when God answers your prayer, he sends a man with divine instruction. He sends a man with solution. He sends a man who he revealed things to. It is your season to break forth from the altar of affliction to step into your mandate, into the season God wants for you. You don't want to tell story in this 2017. Be part of it. God wants to give your life a meaning. God wants to deliver you. Your life will be transmogrified. You will never remain the same where you are. It is your season. It is your time to break forth. That devil is a liar. God wants to release you and move you to your next level. Hallelujah. That's why you need to get involved. A lady was miraculously healed of HIV. The affliction of their family did something that there are six ladies, no one gets married. No one gets married in the family. Different issues because of the altar of affliction. And this altar of affliction was controlled because their father worshiped idol and the altar was working with a human face of the devil, an agent of the devil, in the person of their stepmother. And their stepmother tied all of them that none of them would get married. And the stepmother, all her daughters are married. But this one, she told them physically, now the altar of affliction was working with the agent. And this lady went everywhere, prayed, prayed to get married. Do you know, a man finally came. About four months to their marriage, they were to go for tests. 
in the hospital. Now, a night before that, the lady had a dream. She saw a woman came to her dream and injected her. And when they got to the hospital, lo and behold, when the result came out, the result says that she was HIV positive. And the, the, the man that was to marry her was HIV negative. The man said, I can't marry you anymore. I can't marry you. No, you have HIV. That means you are sleeping with men. How can the woman, how can the lady explain that she's not sleeping with men? I know HIV can be gotten through different sources. Or watch what happened. She came to the church. I was ministering to her on one of the Wednesdays. The power of God came by telling. I was prophesying. The Lord took me to where she was standing in the midst of the crowd of people. While I was prophesying, the Lord said, I said, stand up. And the Lord mentioned her name to me. I said, this is your name? She said, yes. I said, you are crying because of a doctor's report. She said, yes. She opened her back quickly and brought out the doctor's report. And the Lord, the Lord revealed to her what was going on, that the father used to worship idol and dedicated all of them, and that she's got a stepmother. She said, yes, I have a stepmother. That the stepmother said, none of us will get married. And all our children, all our daughters are married. I said, you are supposed to be married now. But you people went for test. A day before you went for the test, you were injected. The lady shouted. She said, yes, man of God, it, it is, this is true. This is what happened to me, that she was injected in the dream. At the end of it, you know what happened? The Lord said, confront the power. She said, after they gave her injection, this is a lady who previously, before now, where she was working, she, they, they normally undergo routine tests. She, was, she carried out all the tests. There was no trace of such. But after the night they gave her injection when they were to go for tests, she, she went for tests and it came out HIV positive. When I ministered to the lady and revealed to her, the idol the father had dedicated them to, the altar of affliction, and the stepmother. And she confirmed that the stepmother told them that none of them would get married. When I prayed for her, something happened. The Lord said, confront the altar of affliction. Then God took me into the spirit and the altar, the contractual agreement that their father had with, with the ancestral spirit was destroyed by the blood of Jesus. Then the Lord said, confront the strong man. When I lay hand on her, the spirit manifested and I said, I am the ancestral altar. I am working with your stepmother. And I said, as their stepmother, what have you done? She, he said, I vow that none of them will get married and no can marry. I said, what did you do? He said, even this one was praying, 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 fasting, going everywhere. That this one was supposed to get married. But I gave her injection in the dream. She saw a woman, but I did not show my face to her. I said, when you gave her the injection in the dream, what happened? She said, the lady went to hospital, unknown to her that they had projected the sickness. Now imagine through dream. HIV was projected. There are some of you that they still feed in the dream. Every time you eat in the dream, your destiny is being polluted. Every time you eat in the dream, some of you, they, they, you are fed in the dream with poison, demonic and midnight caterers. I don't know the demonic, the altar that have assigned this caterer to afflict you. Some of you, it is sex in your dream. Whenever you have sex in your dream, your spiritual life is polluted. Your destiny is polluted. Now you need prayer. Now some of you, you pray, it stops and comes back again because the altar has not been properly addressed. So I said, what did you do, do to her? She said, I injected her. And the Lord said, pray. When I pray, she vomited something like a black nylon drawish and the thing was smelling after that the Lord said turn the arrow back to the woman and I prayed and the lady was delivered when she got up I asked her do you know what happened she said no I don't know what happened and the Lord narrated look at what happened then she was delivered she went to the hospital the following day lo and behold there was no trace of HIV they called her from the village that the stepmother was confessing in the village what she has done to all of them. And that is how breakthrough, marriage breakthrough, came into the family. And now they are getting married. It is your turn. God wants to set you free. Now, if you want, in case you're watching me, you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, say this prayer with me quickly. 
because Jesus is coming back very soon. You have to be prepared in holiness, in righteousness, because Jesus says, I'm returning, I'm returning back for a church that is without spots nor wrinkles, that is spotless church, a healthy, vibrant, holy church. So get ready. You're not giving your life to Jesus. Jesus is coming back very soon. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Have mercy upon me. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Show me mercy. Take my name away from the book of death. Put my name into the book of life. I will never follow Satan again. I will follow Jesus all my life. Amen. As you have said that prayer, congratulations. Your life will be transmogrified. God bless you. Stay connected in the presence of the Lord. Shalom.